a rumour that's going around that he still had his boots on at the nightclub last night. And, <laughs> his, and his helmet. <laughs> and his helmet. Yeah. All right, OK. I reckon, I reckon you know who we mean. Uh, fellas, take it away. <laughs> Yeah, look, as always, the, the truth is uh, in the middle somewhere of all of that, and we'll get it from the man himself in uh, Angus Brayshaw. Jack Vonnie has just described him as best on ground uh, off field. He's disputing that, but uh, thank you for coming on to the Sunday footy show today. Who, who, if it wasn't you, who was best on ground? <laughs> yeah, look, we had uh, my, vo my voice is ruined. A lot of shouting yesterday, so I don't sound terrific, but I, um, <laughs> I uh, had a great... <laughs> a great um, night, and you know, I didn't. I wanted to appreciate this morning and this moment, so I haven't gone super hard. I put Max Gorn up for three votes, um, Stephen May two, and uh, maybe Joe, you for one. I'll take one. Look, I'm happy, I'm happy to take one vote. <laughs> but is it true, uh, Gussie, that you were out at the pub last night in your full kit, the boots, the socks, the jumper, everything? Yeah. <laughs> Completely true. I uh, didn't have time to take it all off, so. Um, it got a little bit slippery on the boots. They're they, they great on a footy ground, terrible on a, um, on a pub floor. So I um, nearly had a few spills, but uh, man, I'm here, I'm in one piece. And um, yeah, the boots, are, the boots are sweet. It's all good. Thanks for the game because you had a phenomenal third quarter. At three quarter time, I saw Mark Williams go to you. He almost hugged you and embraced you. He wouldn't let you go. What did he say? Well, uh, Choco, so my old man and Choco have known each other for 20 odd years. And uh, it's been, it's been um, a long journey for me and Choc. So, that third quarter, I think, you know, all of us lifted, all of us found, uh, you know, a gear. And he was just saying, we've just got one more quarter. That was the message, just stay in the moment. And that was the message throughout the whole game. So, uh, you know, you can't get too far out of yourself. Obviously, we had a good first quarter. They came back um, and anything was, you know, up for grabs in the last quarter. So, Choco's uh, been brilliant for us as a group. All the coaches were the same. Uh, just stay in the moment, stay focused and, uh, you know, finish it off. I think I saw one stage your wind as well and you just kept pushing on and pushing on and, and you must be stoked. Would you say that was your best game of the season uh, in the biggest game of all? Yeah, look, I, I would. I probably would and that's uh, it's a, you know, pretty special. Um, you know, I've, I've always tried to play my role all year and at times it's, um, you know, you see a bit more of the ball than others. Uh, so... Mm -hmm. You know, at times people would no, say that no. I haven't played as well, but yeah. um, the ball certainly seemed to be coming on my side of the ground. Ed Langdon was on the fat side for most of the day, and um, you know, I just tried to, every time the ball came in my area, try to leave it all out there. Angus, there, there were some people in the Melbourne rooms who felt you were as influential as anyone in the, in the, in the game. Um, did, did you discuss that as a group later on, and when you have a few drinks and maybe rearrange the North Smith order? <laughs> yeah, look, I got a few extra sips, sips of the champagne bottle on the back of... Um, <laughs> On the back of that, but no, I think uh, I think Christian had two and thirty nine, so yeah. I think he's I think he's probably well deserving. And that third quarter, there were so many of us. I felt like who stood up and uh, you know one person didn't shift the tide of that game. It was a uh, it was a full team effort, and I, I couldn't be more proud of, our, of my teammates. And um, you know, I think Christian was a well deserving winner. This is the only medal I need. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> Melbourne seemed to have more role players than anybody else. You got Neil Bullen and Rivers, but you yourself played on a wing all season. Langdon on the other wing predominantly, and you don't see many clubs doing that. But you had to change your game. Third in the Brownlow Medal a couple of years ago, and now you play a more selfless role. Tell us how that came about and the conversation with Goody around that. So it, the way it came about is uh, we we were pretty terrible in 2019 and obviously what we were doing wasn't working as a group. So, uh, you know, it's good his job to find a way to win games of footy. And we, you know, I'm not the only person who's had a role change and people have sacrificed as well uh, as I have. So we're just tinkering with the team, trying to find a, um, the lineup and the plan, the um, strategy that works. So... Yeah, it's been publicised, you know, that I've been on the wing, but I think uh, the whole group's made sacrifices. The whole group has put in, um, you know, such an incredible amount of work, and uh, you know, this is, yeah, this is a, res a res result of that. So, um, yeah, as I said, super proud. Oh, absolutely, and Melbourne supporters very, very proud of what you did do. Uh, um, look, uh, just before we let you go, and I know it was probably the last thing you wanted to do when you woke up this morning, is to come on national television live, but you have done, you've done it beautifully. And now I guess uh, that the footy's over, you can get back to those studies, mm. because we spoke to you on the show, I think it was earlier this year or last year. Yes. Uh, it might have been last year, and Billy was quite enamoured with the course that you're doing. What was it again? It was, um, so at the time, I think I was doing advanced statistical analysis, so Bill and I chopped that up after the meeting. <laughs> uh, now I'm doing uh, corporate finance too. So 
Bill, it's all about, uh, I know you love money, Bill, so maybe we could get, get some help out of you there, but it's, um, I've, I've put in, it's funny, we had not much to do over the last couple of weeks, so I've put in about an extra month's worth of uni, so I've got nothing to do for the next few right. days, so I'm very, <laughs> very excited for that. And when do you head home, Angus? Uh, I um, it's, it's interesting, I haven't, I haven't actually put a date on it, Lloydie. I've got a heap of family over here, but I've also got um, you know, things to do back in Melbourne. So I'm going to get on the phone with Danielle probably at some point later in the day and come up with a date. But it's, um, it's, you know, we've got a few days here at least and um, you know, it's going to be good to celebrate. Angus, um, just before um, we guys, let you go, we're, always, uh, we're, um, we're, we're compiling a list back here in Melbourne of uh, people who've tried to insert themselves in this premiership. And there are a few jumping on the bandwagon. <laughs> Have you got any nominees at all? Because our list is coming up after the break. We've got five. Maybe your uncle. <laughs> yeah, and look, I saw a lot of him last night. He was, uh, I don't know if it was a coincidence. Everywhere I sort of turned around and looked, he was um, floating around. So I'll put, I'll put James on the list, but uh, uh, he surely goes straight to the top, I would have thought as well. <laughs> All right, good stuff, well, Angus, mate. Thanks so much for stopping by. Phenomenal, yeah, phenomenal, TJ. Like one of those unsung heroes in a grand final that had a, just an unbelievable <laughs> influence on the result. So enjoy it. I know you will. Yeah, I absolutely will. Thanks so much, and thanks to all the Melbourne fans at home who are watching. Uh, this one's for you guys. We know how hard you're doing it, so I hope you enjoyed it. Beautiful, terrific stuff there. All right, good on you. Thanks very much for that, uh, Damo, Kano, and also Angus Brayshaw.